Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Jeremy Corbyn gets his first big electoral test in just under two weeks' time when voters in England go to the polls and local elections on May the 5th. Opposition parties usually do well in these contests, even when they've just lost a general election. But analysts are predicting that the party could actually lose councillors and party strategists are managing expectations. Here's our Ellie. There's a simple principle in British politics. If you want to win elections, you need to win seats of every shape and size. History shows us something else. When in government, parties tend to lose council seats. In opposition, they tend to win them. Even Michael Foote, who went on to lead Labour to its biggest general election defeat ever, did pretty well to start with. In his first electoral tests in 1981, the party took an extra 988 council seats. When Neil Kinnock became leader, he also managed a more modest 43 seats. John Smith, a net gain of 101 seats. Tony Blair, well over 1,600. And then Ed Miliband, he picked up 857 seats. Since local government was invented in its modern form in 1974, there have been only two years, 1982 and 1985, when the opposition party has actually lost seats in a local election if it's not a general election year. So far, so historically positive for Jeremy Corbyn. The problem is experts in the field, professors Rallings and Thresher, reckon Labour could lose 150 seats in these English council elections. And even the party machine has been managing expectations. You simply can't explain away any kind of net loss of seats in these elections. After all, a new leader in the middle of his honeymoon period, following on from a disastrous mega galactic shambles of a budget failure, shouldn't expect to see anything other than dramatic gains in the local elections that follow. And anything else, historically speaking, is looking for an excuse. It's an argument put forward by some of his MPs. I'm not going to put a specific number on it, but three to 400 seats would, I think, be a very good uh, step in the right direction. We have to be ambitious uh, because we are the Labour Party and we're a party of government. We exist in order to be in government to make a difference to people's lives. There is Southampton. That's where Ed Miliband has been today. Just the last time this current batch of council right seats were contested, Labour, under the leadership of Ed Miliband, defied expectation. Southampton was one of a number of areas Labour failed to capitalise on at the general election, losing a parliamentary seat to the Tories. If Jeremy Corbyn wants to be Prime Minister in 2020, he will be expected to make inroads now in many of the English council areas and keep up the momentum. So what if he doesn't? I think that all leaders are judged by their results and we've got from now until the 5th of May to deliver positive and encouraging results for Labour. Right. It's always hard to compare historic elections. There are always different political contexts, varying number of seats up for grabs. But rightly or wrongly, several Labour MPs I've spoken to will do just that, conscious that Jeremy Corbyn could make history for the wrong reasons. We're joined now from Salford by the Shadow Education Secretary, Lucy Powell. Welcome to the programme, Lucy Powell. Uh, your Labour MP colleague, Stephen Kinnock, says... You should be gaining an extra three to four hundred council seats in England. Does that sound about right? Well, look, I'm not going to get into the predictions game. I'm sure you'll appreciate that. But, you know, like Stephen, like Jeremy, like uh, the rest of the shadow cabinet, I'm optimistic about these elections and we are a political party and we're always looking to make gains and to make progress at every electoral uh, test. And these elections are no different from that. Okay. But I'm not going to get into the uh, predictions business. But you, well, have what to, about you do the, have to put hold it into on, context. Hold on. Yeah. What about the principle then that new leaders, new opposition leaders, always do pretty well in their first electoral test? I was looking at the record. Ed Miliband, Tony Blair, John Smith, Neil Kinnock, even Michael Foote as the party was splitting. They all made gains in local elections after becoming leader. So we must surely expect Jeremy Corbyn to do the same. Well, as I say, I'm very much hoping that we will be making progress. But do you think you will make gains? gains? Well, 
I, you know, we'll have a conversation about that after the uh, after the election results well, we're are talking in. Now but about we it. are looking at winning in London for the first time since 2004. Uh, we're looking to, to make gains and make progress in the local elections. We're looking to uh, stay in power in Wales, obviously in Scotland. Uh, things are, are difficult there and that they are long-term legacy issues for the Labour Party to, to mm. deal with uh, in Scotland. But you do have to set it into context here. It has been an incredibly tough year for the Labour Party. We suffered a crushing election defeat, uh, not, you know, not even a year ago, uh, that, that we weren't expecting and that everybody else uh, wasn't expecting either. We had a long drawn out leadership contest. We've got a, a new leader in Jeremy Corbyn. And of course, as is often the case, it takes some time for that to bed in and for everybody to, okay. uh, to adjust to that. All right, but but I, think that, I think that we've had a very uh, positive few weeks where we've been on the front foot. We've been a very effective opposition whether it comes to issues like the budget or steel or, or okay, health or education. We haven't got too much and, time and you know, I'm so, trying to okay. pin you down on this. Let me put it in context. The context of these elections is that the Tories are divided and in disarray. Absolutely. Last month brought yet another omni shambles budget. Why would you not be poised for big gains? Well, as I say, I'm, I'm very hopeful that we are going to, to get big gains. And, you know, London uh, would be a massive gain. We haven't won in London since 2004, as well as looking at other places uh, across uh, England as well. But as I say, you've got to look at the context. You know, what I'm more interested in is are we on the right track for winning in 2020? Mm. And I think that is a really tough job. Well, I don't think any one of us underestimate I the challenge that. that we face as a political party. Well, let me see if I can pin you down. getting into position to win in 2020, and that let is not an easy job. No, but maybe one of the reasons why it's not an easy job is that you may not be in tune with the public mood. I'm going to show our viewers a chart um, in which it shows they regularly rate immigration one of their biggest concerns. It's way ahead of the NHS and the economy. This is a very recent poll. Most voters are not against immigration, but they think the annual net influx of 300,000 plus is too high. How does that square with Mr Corbyn's view that we have not let too many in? Well, look, all these issues we have got to think long and hard and deeply about, and there is an urgency to that as well. And, you know, immigration, welfare, the economy, uh, you know, these were all issues at the last election, and, but that was only a few months ago. And if we knew what the answers were, if we knew how we were going to make Labour relevant again, the Labour values that I care about, about equality and justice for all, how are we going to make those relevant in the modern economy, in the modern world? If I had those answers, then we wouldn't be sitting here now because we would be in government. Do but you agree with answers. Mr Corbyn? So we've Do got to spend, we have got to spend time, and you know that is for Jeremy, for me, for all of us, we have got to spend the, the hard, difficult, job of understanding how the Labour Party right. can be relevant You've already to said the modern that. world so and let the me modern ask economy. You this. And that includes uh, issues around immigration. Of course, well, let it me come back to immigration. And let, me try and get a, let me try and get a specific question, uh, answer out of you. Do you agree with Jeremy Corbyn that in recent years we have not let too many in? Well, I, mean, I don't want to get into a numbers game about immigration. I know from well, all the work that I do on the doorstep, immigration is a massive issue and people have real concerns about the impact that immigration has on, uh, on some of our communities, so why not, not all, answer but some the of question? our communities. And, and you know, as the Labour Party, we have to address those. That's why you know, we, I thought we were right at the last election to uh, have a policy around the emergency okay. break, for example, on uh, benefits for EU uh, migrants, a policy that then okay. the government have adopted. But I don't think simple uh, retail policy offers are actually what Labour's challenge is right now. Our what? challenge is, and it's a really difficult challenge, is over the next few years, how, what is our relevant values-driven yes. offer to the public that will help us win the I next understand. election Lucy as well? Pally, even and I get that. That's the fourth time you've said that. So let me come on to education, which okay. is your area. Yeah. Um, you were asked if you plan to bring free schools and academies back under local authority control. You said no. What I've said is that by 2020, nearly every secondary school and most primary schools will be a free school or an academy. Do you still stand by that? Well, uh, most 
uh, most secondary schools are already academies. Uh, there are only 15 or 17 percent of primary schools uh, that are academies. Well, you said nearly every secondary and most primary. Do you still stand by that? Well, I, well, I don't, I, I don't, I don't know about primary schools. Let's see what happens over the next few weeks because well, the government's attempt to force all schools against mm. their wishes to become academies is now on the rocks, mm. and you know, this I, may actually put the brakes on some schools feeling that they've got no option but to become academies, which is what many schools have felt over the last and I few years. And I understand that the government's policy of trying to make every school an academy isn't some difficulty. I don't quite, quite take your point. But you said nearly every secondary school and most primaries uh, will be either free schools or academies. Although it doesn't involve force, you're not going down that road. It's not that different from where the government wants to end up, is it? Well, I think you're taking my comments completely out of context. What I was well, talking about is what, what, would, what would Labour's policy be at the next election in that circumstance, whether that circumstance exists or not. And, and my point is that we've got to look anew at what is the accountability framework for all schools. How do we ensure that there are sufficient places in our schools, that we have got rising standards in our schools, we've got sufficient school improvement support for all of our schools, and that we've got proper probity and accountability of some of these academy chains of which we're seeing you know many more problems arising with their accountability oh. and probity and that's what I'm going to be uh, looking at but in the in the meantime in the short term you know, I'm going to be fighting tooth and nail the government's plans to force good and outstanding schools against their wishes to become uh, academies I, I understand they don't your position that. on that Jeremy Corbyn has described academization not a nice word but described the move to academies as quote asset stripping do you agree with that well I think that, actually Jeremy said lots of uh, other things about the the forced academization program well, is it as asset well. stripping or not and well it, in so, in some cases it, you know it can be but I think the key issue here is does it meet the test of school improvement? Well, you know, there is mixed evidence about whether academisation in and of itself uh, leads to school improvement, but as the Tory-dominated Education Select Committee uh, found. Mm. The second question is, does it give schools freedoms and autonomy? And I think, you know, how can that be the case if you're forcing a school against its wish to be uh, an academy? So mm. that's not uh, real autonomy. I understand. And then the third test is around accountability and progress. Right. And there are re some, some very real issues uh, there. But Lucy and Powell, some might call that some might call that asset stripping. Well, some might call that financial probity. If there our are state different system, issues involved let me put in this part. If our state system is being asset stripped, as your leader claims, that would be really serious, wouldn't it? So is he right or is he wrong? Well, look, there have been there have been examples of financial mismanagement in some academy chains. We've seen oh. those recently uh, where. where directors have been paying themselves uh, double uh, money by setting up uh, arm's length uh, you know, organisations that they're also paying themselves from. So there, there are issues of financial probity, which is exactly why Jeremy and I have both been arguing that there needs to be a much more robust accountability uh, structure. That it is just impossible for Whitehall to run directly. But he seems to, to be directly. against if academies altogether. But, but, but Mr it, Corbyn seems to be against academies altogether. You're not. No. We, we, I've got exactly the same uh, view about this. Jeremy and I have worked incredibly closely on these issues, and that is that there are some excellent academy schools. There are also some excellent community schools, and really this old tired argument that the Conservatives want to have of pitting one school type against another you know, is, is, is frankly over. Okay. What we've got to be addressing is ensuring that we've got good quality teachers and head teachers in all of our schools, something Indeed. the government is failing to do. We've got to ensure that schools have got adequate resources in and in fact that what they're facing is a real terms cuts to their school budgets. And what we've got to also ensure is that there are sufficient good quality places for all of our children. All and right, this listen. fragmented school system is leading to a crisis in school places I understand. and a crisis Lucy in Park, uh, teacher shortages. You very interesting ground which you've gone over before and that instead of what you say so I want to show an advert that's gone up from the Labour Party for a new media spokesperson uh, for Jeremy Corbyn and it says leaders office media spokesperson as a fixed term contract uh, for Jeremy Corbyn leader of the Labour Party it will run until December the 31st 2016 um, or when he ceases to be leader whichever is the sooner the ad says which do you think will be sooner <laughs> well I haven't seen that uh, I haven't seen that advert, but Jeremy's only been our leader for a, for a few months. Uh, you know, he's 
he's started okay. You're not going to, to tell to me which would be sooner. Uh, in his job as the oh. leader of the opposition, and we're supporting him in okay. doing that, and I'm not going to comment on that. Very well. Lucy Powell, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, that's Labour's prospects in the English local elections.